Hello. 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 Hey, we're waiting for a few folks to join. Um, today we have a presentation by Hubble. Um, and perhaps a few more things. Okay. Hi, Ryan. Yo, what up? Start in a minute or so here once a couple folks that were waiting for join. I'll just, I'll just open the meeting formally. Uh, welcome everyone. This is a meeting of the CNCF TAG Observability. Uh, this is a CNCF sponsored uh, meeting. Please don't put anything in the chat or, uh, or, or that will be in violation of uh, the code of conduct. Um, we're waiting on Thomas Graf, uh, who uh, I understand will be giving uh, an overview of Cilium and Hubble in particular. Um, I am pinging them to see if they are online and coming. Hey, Ken. Hey, man. Hey, everyone. Uh, while we're waiting for our fearless presenter or presenters to uh, to appear, I will put a link in the chat to the meeting notes. Please feel free to sign in. If there's anything you'd like to add to the agenda, uh, feel free to do so. Well, this is going to be a quick meeting, potentially. <laughs> um, it's a really cool topic, too, because I actually gave a presentation internally on eBPF last week and was talking about Cilium and um, Pixie and stuff. So it would have been nice to see it in action. Yeah, um, I had also um, lined up Gibbs Cullen to give an update on um, the persona work uh, that they had been doing last year. Hi, Richie. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, interesting times. I also found out that they're double and triple booking general board and TOC stuff on Tuesdays. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. So I had talked with Liz Rice and Thomas Graff about them doing the Cilium thing, uh, and they are not showing up. So while we're waiting, is there anything? Anyone wants to talk about quite literally anything is fair game. There's, there's tons we could talk about, um, whether it's new work, uh, I, place where folks can contribute. But um, I don't know. Perhaps we should hold it for a few more minutes and and list well. with what hat with a TOC hat or a project hat. I'm sorry, what? Uh, you mean Liz Rice? Uh, you, we're waiting for Liz Rice? Because if yes... Uh, so I had talked to Liz uh, in, in the last TLC meeting, you know, I had I had said that we had had in the past uh, observability projects come to present um, and, that, uh, and that it would make a lot of sense uh, to have a presentation on Hubble as it's an incubating project and whatnot. Um, and so I had assumed, uh, well, not assumed, but uh, we had planned and did put on the agenda uh, for the meeting today, but they have not appeared. So, uh, and Alolita has just joined us. So for the first time in a while, we have all three chairs here. Um, Hi, everyone. <laughs> hey, Alolita. Um, we were waiting for 
Thomas uh, to come do the psyllium presentation. Uh, he's okay. Not yeah. And I'm having trouble raising him, so we might just want to call this or talk about other stuff. But I had kind of the agenda today was a fairly, fairly, you know, um, a good amount of time uh, uh, for for Hubble to be presented. Um, Should we ping him on Slack? Oh, I have already. Uh, okay. And Liz, um, uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe maybe something came up, um, but I don't have much more on the agenda prepped for today other than that. So, um, for folks that have just come here for the first time, welcome. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm half dancing a bit. No worries. I just want to introduce myself. I'm Jackie. Um, I actually used to be at this uh, Continuous Delivery Foundation. I was their director of ecosystem and community. Um, but uh, since, what is it now, probably a month, I transitioned over to KubeCost. Um, and so we are interested in getting more involved in the community. Um, so one of the things that I would be interested in figuring out is also like, uh, we just submitted an application to the CNCF as sandbox for our open cost model, um, which is our open source project. So I'd love to be able to come also have like one of our engineers come and present um, the open cost model. I don't, I, I don't know what the process is. So I just thought I, since we're not doing anything, I take some time yeah, well, to ask dumb questions. Thank you so much for, for, for coming and welcome. Um, the process is pretty open. You put yourself on the agenda and, and, um, and that's it. And that's uh, so it. Okay, that's cool. on the spot, but we seem to have some time that apparently has freed up in our calendar for today. Um, you are welcome to chat for a while about that if you like, uh, or come back. Yeah, I, I just, um, with... yeah, like I said, uh, <laughs> I, I'm pretty new to the company. So like the, you know, fun information you're probably looking for. I'm not the right person to, to give it, but I'd love to put myself in the agenda then um, and then just bring in, um, like I said, one of our engineers to, to do a presentation on an open cost or even web or CEO. So um, I know there's a, a, a big commitment from our side to just get more involved in, in the Kubernetes community and the CNCF. So um, that's why I'm attending because there's no one else right now that has the bandwidth. Um, but I'd love to just, yeah, get more folks in. Mm -hmm. Well, that's in scope for uh, the tag. You know, the tag is not just for CNCF projects. The tag exists to, in part, inform the TOC on gaps in the ecosystem and opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, open source projects that are not yet part of the, of the CNCF, as well as established projects. So, um, you know, if it's if it's about the observation of cloud native systems, which includes observing how much money is being evaporated by the minute, um, that's absolutely within scope. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll I will get that uh, coordinated then. And yeah, looking forward to it. I promise we'll show up. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, there are a couple pieces of administrivia we could fill a little bit of time with, but they are they are few. Uh, one, uh, I believe it's the beginning of May, Richie, maybe keep me straight on the date, uh, but we're coming up on two years, of uh, Richie and I being uh, co-chairs, uh, and so elections uh, will, nominations and elections will be happening uh, in, the com in the coming months. Um, we also have uh, a lot of opportunity for technical leads uh, or others that want to take a leadership position and or are passionate about topics within our scope and want to drive projects or work streams, uh, and we have um a good deal of them defined just waiting for warm bodies um uh so there's that um we will be having in two weeks we'll, uh uh we'll have a final vote on the logo which has lingered since last year uh, we had a bunch of submissions uh so we're meeting later on in the week to kind of put together the, the the final the final straw poll or the final poll rather uh when it, it sounds silly but when we do uh, agree on a logo for the tag that unlocks a skill tree in the form of community sites, discussion boards, and uh, some 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 group management uh, that the CNCF has for groups like the Technical Advisory Group on Observability. Uh, so uh, it's a logo, but there's a lot behind it, uh, and so that will be uh, next uh, meeting in two weeks as well, or the first Tuesday of, of the next month. Uh, Alolita or Richie, is there anything 
you wanted to chat about. I uh, I feel a little sheepish that we have an empty agenda, but it's uh, so maybe for Jacqueline. Um, the process to get this on is uh, write it into an agenda, uh, like into a future a future agenda, uh, and and then you're on the list. Uh, so it's really simple. Uh, the main ask is um, bring technical people, bring technical content. Um, so no, don't. If a salesperson yeah. comes, uh, they will they will go under in this call. If if a tech like hard tech person comes, um, they'll be thriving yeah, no thriving. absolutely i was planning to probably ask either our ceo web who is is very technical himself or either um one of our engineers so no i yeah. no i totally get it no product pitches i no sell yeah. people i promise <laughs> the the other thing is um if you have a timeline of of intention like you mentioned uh submitting to to tuc for um for submitting the project blah 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 like the, if there is any timeline or if any of those steps already happened or anything that's also relevant information for the group um just yeah so we I, know where the thing is and everything yeah of course and i actually yeah we submitted our application and we're hoping it gets reviewed march 8th for the sandbox mm -hmm. so yeah Okay. I, I had a question too, right? I guess it's separate from that. I don't know if there's any other thoughts on that. Uh, fire away. Um, have we talked, so I've missed the past like couple and I know a while back we were talking about like the like working group, the, like observe Kubernetes working group stuff. And I was wondering if there's been any, I guess like progress on that or if we've gotten any closer to, I guess kind of, yeah, like moving forward with that. Uh, yes. So uh, last week at the TOC meeting, uh, I kind of uh, gave a brief overview of that. I can provide a link to the YouTube and whatnot. It's uh, it's on their channel um, uh, to give them a heads up that we had formed this working group. Uh, our plan of record is that Q1 of this year uh, is sort of uh, planning and preparation and design and things like that. Um, uh, and Q2 and Q3 are when we're hoping to ha actually uh, do implementation with some contributors on board uh, by by Q by the beginning of, of Q2, uh, we had originally slated this to be, you know, Q uh, you know Q1 and Q2 of this year where we did most of the implementation. Uh, but between holidays, uh, COVID for some of us and, and our families and some other things, um, we're kind of we took a, a month slip. Uh, but we do have uh, the working document and the charter uh, in a PR. Um, it's it's been there for about a month just making sure that there's no other comments or no other feedback. Um, and, you know, uh, we're locked and loaded to, to move forward uh, on that. Cool. And so is there like a meeting time for the working group yet? Uh, there is not, but we, like I said, uh, the uh, chairs, uh, Alolita and I, and perhaps Richie are meeting on Thursday. Uh, to kind of finalize all of that stuff and put the package together and launch it formally, but it's for all intents and purposes. Uh, it's been Ken, uh, Ken Finnegan, uh, myself, uh, Daniel Kahn, and uh, Michael Hasenblas. We've had a series of meetings um, over the over the course of December and the beginning of January. Um, if anyone is interested, please reach out or put your name uh, in the PR or just it's in some other way indicate your interest in, and and. Uh, also on the mailing list, when we do a doodle, we'll go out to find, you know, a time that works for those that, that wish to be uh, involved. Cool, thanks. Yeah, uh, lastly, I'll say on the administrative side, um, uh, we have queued up for either uh, the, the next meeting or the meeting after on the 15th of March, uh, the Pixie team uh, presented nearly a year ago uh, when they, you know, just after they had uh, joined. Uh, and in a year, they've added a whole bunch of new stuff. So um, they are uh, excited to come and give us a more in-depth overview of what's happened in that project over the last year, uh, the advances they've made, the new things that are there for, for all to see and use. Uh, so that is also on deck. Uh, they were at our last meeting and spoke briefly around some of the challenges of using Pixie uh, at scale. Uh, not Pixie, but uh, uh, using eBPF uh, at scale. 
Um, they had informed a discussion a few weeks ago uh, when Bumblebee came to talk about the EBPF work that that project, uh, which is nascent and new, uh, has been doing. Uh, and so we had subsequent conversations and they have asked to come and give a more in-depth overview of, of the last year of progress that made. But we're still scheduling that for the first or the 15th of next month. Um, that's about all I've got <laughs> uh, for today. Uh, I'm gonna ping them one last time. I don't wanna have people sitting here with dead air. Uh, but does anyone else wanna talk about anything today or should we unfortunately call it a little, call it a little early? I think uh, uh, again, uh, Matt and everyone, I know uh, we were planning this uh, session out today um going forward i think we'll get a bit more organized we are as matt said we've, we've you know kind of discussed a calendar of events and and you know again different uh, groups and projects presenting uh richard i i think it would be nice to actually have an update from the prometheus and community also uh perhaps that would be something that the you know you could sure. pull in one of the engineers to present on and um uh, I'll definitely, you know, get uh, a open telemetry update uh, ready, you know, also for uh, covering, you know, maybe first week of March, um, but we can plan that out. And again, uh, I think we have done Pixie before. The idea really is, you know, how can we actually invite some of the uh, our customers also who are using, uh, you know, a lot of the projects that we talk about here to also come and present. but. Um, again, I think that moving forward, let's be a bit more organized. It'll just help us in um, making this a good productive discussion session. And um, <clears throat> this Boris suggests that you're absolutely right. This would be great. If we can invite Prometheus folks, as I remember, they run the show every Monday, right? It would be nice to know on what station they are right now. Yeah. Well, how the good is open telemetry project because it seems open telemetry can go to Eager and can go to Loki. And Loki is using a Prometheus format and still open source. So just a, it would be nice to know what is the next step, how close there well, is open telemetry address. Yeah, I mean, Boris, uh, again, you know, Richard and I both worked on the Prometheus, uh, full interoperability of Prometheus in, in open telemetry. So the great, great. The good news is that you know we are actually fully compatible for metrics and can fully interoperate. And as you know, uh, Jaeger and Zipkin is also fully supported uh, yeah. in both, uh, you know, with both pipelines. But uh, specifically, Otel, you know, definitely can guarantees an end-to-end -end trace uh, tracing support. And what is more important, if you can't correlate trace event in the log event, and in this case, it's very really important if we can go through comparison of Loki and Samsung, what can be done by Jaeger or maybe, I don't know, Tampa probably cannot be discussed right now, right? It's uh, because Yeah, it's that's a, a good suggestion, actually. I mean, it's not open source or it's still considered to be open source, Tampa. Richard, do you know anything about that? Tempa, it's a, a Grafana Labs product that built um, for the same, um, the same as yeah, the yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. question is, can we discuss it here or it doesn't make sense? So first of all, it is open source. Absolutely, same as, same as okay. uh, everything. Um, um, I, I'm personally biased. Uh, of course, I work at Grafana Labs, so um, I would recuse myself from any... Oh, I, I understand any, that's um, Neutral. I, I got it. I mm -hmm. But in general, um, let's say anything that would use Prometheus format where we can meet all these different uh, pillars. So, for example, if traceability can use Prometheus format, is a log collection use Prometheus format and Prometheus naturally, we can just uh, correlate these events on the fly. So, this is where it would, it would be better to, to see how and open telemetry. Entries would go there and convert to Prometheus format. Mm -hmm. uh, this would Makes be sense. the most important topic because in this case you can build up one platform, open yep. source. That would be yep. 
when you fight and you can use this it's easy now yeah that's a that's a good suggestion boris i mean we'll we'll uh get get that comparison i think that would be good to present in this um, session i can tell you even more because usually uh, we sit on the level when we just you know everyone talk about these three pillars which is a uh, metrics logs and traces but nobody paying for next layer which is uh alerts itself and uh and big view for observability and this is what actually we're trying to do by using this open source we're just trying to bring alerts back that have been generated from all the sources and put back under prometheus and later capable to correlate these events alerts and you can see immediately what alerts have been triggered what time and how they related so that's a nice big topic maybe from observability point not permitted but observability. but i agree it would be nice if we can uh, create agenda and let's say you, you have something for next uh, yeah yeah we can go through this one we try to prepare ourselves our questions and work together so i want to make sure i'm understanding the request correctly uh, are, are you looking to have uh someone present an overview of sort of prometheus um uh open protocols like remote read remote write and open metrics uh and things like alert manager and alert configurations and and provide some examples of how different projects within the cncf can be brought together to achieve a consistent platform um is that is that sort of a tech the technical yeah, yes. of course we have for many other questions but in general for general public it would be very useful i have for example a question <clears throat> when we push data to prometheus and it's saves this in prometheus format you cannot for example easily transfer this data for future review for another op open sources for example for elastic search so is it, there is a uh, any um, attempts to just um, reformat this data later and to get other open sources that do not use Prometheus format to use this data. Example, I collect Prometheus data for 90 days on one minute interval and later Elasticsearch people would like to do long-term analysis. They can't because it's a different format. We have to find a way to move it back. There is some solutions but there is not a unified solution. But it's a usual problem with any uh, with any stuff. You are more than welcome to bring your data, and it's highly difficult to expose this data back to anyone else. So that's what I'm trying to say. If we can discuss how Prometheus can help to bring this data back to any open source. But for simplicity's <laughs> sake, let's bring Prometheus <laughs> and discuss this matter with Prometheus, where they are, and what we can do. I mean, for Prometheus, uh, we we can absolutely try and 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 cover these kind of use cases within within the tag, um, like as as content or teaching or something. I do believe that in particular in the Prometheus and also ten point Loki case, with the remote write uh, protocols, there is a defined way to get everything out without any barrier. Um, of course, that's just part of the overall design to to enable both getting in and out. And open telemetry is also defining uh, protocols like the OTLPs, which um, which seem like a good choice for for a lingua franca completely detached from using a library. Um, I I do believe a lot of this is already out in the open, but maybe trying to create this or what have you like flipping this. We have always tried as tech to get more end users involved uh, and and like figure out what what actual benefit we can give to the end users uh, and and found it hard to find out what that might be so this is good signal that we can that i don't know maybe create the list have links to things or or um republish uh, existing content or something yeah, there's also an opportunity here i think to kind of, I don't know if you were, uh, Boris, I don't know if you had attended la uh, last meeting, but uh, uh, Catherine Paganini from the Business Value Subcommittee and the Glossary Project came. Uh, there's another effort within um, the Business Value Subcommittee 
uh, to generate sort of a matrix subsection by subsection of the landscape and provide some context and higher level summaries of the different projects that the projects can put in and, and then use that as a springboard to kind of produce additional content, be it short videos on YouTube or blogs or presentations in, in the tag meeting or, or some combination. Um, I will say that, you know, the CNCF through the use of protocols like OTLP, open metrics, remote read, remote write, Prometheus, uh, you know, uh, things like that uh, has fostered an ecosystem of vendors uh, and projects that all address sort of a different ways to, to solve some of the challenges you're talking about. Um, and so, you know, we do need to be careful that in the tag there, you know, we can't say like, this is the one unified way to do it. It's this and this and this and this, right? What we can say is we have open protocols and open formats that allow end users to interchange different pieces out and let those pieces and those vendors compete on the merits of their solution which are indexed for different use cases and have different trade-offs. Uh, and so um, I, I think we can absolutely do what you suggest, but we, but we do just, I just need to, to say at a high level that, you know, we are not kingmakers here in, 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 the, in the tag and we do need to have, you know, we can't, we can't declare one as the way as, as you are suggesting, but we can say this is an example of it. And in fact, the Observe K8s project that we talked about earlier, uh, really is a good vehicle for this because it's a it, it's a curated end user driven catalog or it hopes to be uh, where the exact stack you talked about you know tempo Loki cortex uh, I'm sorry tempo Loki Prometheus I believe um, that's an example of putting Legos together in a way that fits a use case but there's a bunch of others too right and so in that in that way we can actually you know in a, in a safe way that doesn't put the the CNCF. Which I, which I, I, I yeah. absolutely right. It shouldn't be only one. And uh, yeah. we can review and we can review how they can just actually just talk issue with the other. That's the most important part. That's my problem because I have too many different products here and they do not keep this general protocol to communicate. Yeah, 100% with you. But if you can just do me a favor from last meeting if you can't resend this link so i would probably it's my fault i didn't check up on this presentation uh i will certainly do that uh, it's on it's a, it's the video has been posted for a while but uh, later on today I, actually i'm posting something to linkedin and then to slack with a summary of the last meeting and a link to the video uh, you know sort of, sort of like last and then what we just did and then a preview to what's to come so we want to get more to a cadenced outward messaging uh, so look look for that later today. Uh, uh, it'll be in the Slack channel and wherever else I can publicize it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the last thing I'll say is last year, I think, actually, ironically, when Pixie presented, someone came uh, and demonstrated a tool that is specifically for bulk read, bulk write of historical data from Prometheus in very large yep. chunks. Um, there was a, there was a tool I can't remember the name of it. In addition, uh, uh, Bartek, our tech lead, um, or one of, one of our tech leads, uh, also uh, has a different tool. I think that he was working on last year. I don't know if it's done, but we can we can ask him. Uh, that uses gRPC to do the gRPC approach that uses bits of Prometheus and other things to actually bulk move things in the same way. Uh, however, I don't speak for the Prometheus community. I think. Um, Richie, Richie is an authority there, so he'll have to keep me honest. But. I think Bartik has his tool in the Thanos repository. Uh, for those who don't know, Thanos uh, is, is basically part of the Prometheus family. So you have Prometheus as the single binary, single instance, blah, 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 through Federation. And that you have Cortex and Thanos as uh, horizontally scalable um, implementations, which reuse a ton of uh, Prometheus code. And there's also huge overlap between uh, the maintainers of the three projects. Um, and I think that tool lives there, but I think that works. But unless you have like endless, like huge amounts of data and you need to move actual chunks on the storage backend, remote write uh, should, should suffice in most 
in most migration and, and copying. Patterns. That is a question about because mm -hmm. yes, there is a uh, was a case for Prometheus um, that was uh, dump this data and then the format for any other tools and protocol. But I couldn't find anything like this on Cortex side. Besides, if you involve read and write on Cortex, you're going to pay the sources uh, price to do this frozen back query. Uh, querying this stuff. So that's a question. So if we are already uh, push data to Prometheus format, is it possible to bring to another format or vice versa, for example? Yeah, I know up front, so we can bring any example JSON format to Prometheus format. It's easy. But is it possible from Prometheus format to bring the, back to any readable such as a CVS or a CVC or JSON, common separate file or JSON. There is some examples, but I'm not sure this is a standard. For, I mean, everything which you get out of, uh, also uh, we, are, we are very deep into the specifics of, of Prometheus. So um, if um, uh, just uh, on a note, but um, anything you get out of Prometheus through the web interface or as an, uh, like any query you run against Prometheus is coming back as JSON. So you already have that. For most other things um, like Datadog, what have you, they, um, they um, proclaim, compatibility on Prometheus remote write. So you should be able to move the state at least towards those. Uh, how to move it out, I don't know. Um, with my Prometheus hat on during KubeCon, we expect to launch the Prometheus conformance program. Uh, for real, we, al we already did a pre-launch and, and published some initial results last KubeCon, uh, but in May, we expect to actually um, have something like with a logo and contracts in place and everything where you can rely mm -hmm. on anyone who claims this actually supports it. Okay, good, good to know. And to, again, if you can share this information, Chris, we can review it a little bit. Good. Yeah, uh, Boris, please, uh, if, if, you, if you would, uh, uh, put your email either to Slack to me or in the in the meeting notes. Um, uh, well, second, uh, uh, email? Yeah, absolutely, sorry. Uh, yeah, here's a, here's a, here's a link uh, in the chat here if uh, you joined after I sent it the first time. Uh, for um, some reason, Try to do this to Google and I'm sorry, my <laughs> company server. No, no, it's really okay. Uh, the, the, the other thing I was going to say is that one thing that I did with, with our our uh, Prometheus and metrics collection stuff is uh, remote write and uh, can have multiple endpoints, right? So you can send, you know, your metrics wherever they're going, and then. In our case, we had like a, a data science and machine learning analytics team that wanted to do some historical analysis. So we send things to there also. So, you know, you can do a one-to-many fan out um, of, of remote write for what it's worth. That doesn't cover your historical use case necessarily directly, uh, but in terms of data from now moving forward, you know, we, we found it quite beneficial to have, you know, remote write being sent in parallel or triplicate to different places, sometimes for a staging versus production environment to vet new changes to our configuration. And sometimes for a science team that wanted to have workloads that would just absolutely crush our normal metrics backend used for monitoring and alerting, right? We have very large long bulk reads, for example, uh, and things like that. We wanted to decouple those two scenarios to two different backends, but because remote write is so flexible, we were able to do so without much drama and without impact to production workloads, which would just keep on doing what they were doing, sending it to whatever backend made sense. So I'm happy to hire, I'm sure any of the Prometheus team uh, could, could, could point you in the right direction. It was just a simple configuration. Okay, okay. No, no, you're absolutely right. This is a way to do this, just as it just, and the way you just fork solution sent to different. Uh, it also let us uh, have multiple backends, you know, one for short, Duration, uh, short, short. Uh, For short uh, uh, history time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not keeping a lot of historical data, but doing so in a way that's fast to query for dashboards. But then, sort of like for the historical data, something that's a little less expensive to run that's queried intermittently on weekends with batches and things like that. So, so all of these sorts of use cases are all in scope and are supported by the tools as they exist today. Okay, sounds good. But but but, but again, it's a the most simple case. You acquire a lot of data, you push, finally you have on your backend as a Prometheus format, your analytical team 
come in these different tools, which is not part of Prometheus, for example, Elk. And they told me, can we use it? You say, absolutely, this is your S3. They try to do this, they can't, because it's not a JSON. <laughs> this is Prometheus. This is just one example. So uh, it should be possible to bring to Prometheus format, and it should be possible to transfer back as a, any other formats. The same piece of that. That is not here. As you mentioned, there is a way to do this. There is some using some um, bulk data on Prometheus level, not on Cortex level. On Cortex level, I, I don't know if something like this is at least these days. Sure. Sorry, but I took too, too much of your time. So. No, I, we, we had unexpectedly lots of it. So um, does anyone else have anything they want to raise or should we return time to folks? Okay. Um, okay. Well, um, again, I apologize that we didn't have the presentation that we advertised. Uh, we will we will do that uh, as soon as we can um, uh, when we figure out what's up. Um, but if that's all, uh, I wish everyone a good week, and I'll see you uh, on the first, hopefully. Thank you. See you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.